Well, HLN operates in Eyemouth because it's one of the areas of, of disadvantage in borders. So there's there's quite a lot of uh, unemployment here. It used to be a quite a vibrant fishing community, which um, you know is is really much less than it used to be. So there are pockets of of deprivation within the town, although it's got a very a very strong community sense or community spirit going on here. This group has been running for about five, six years now. It started off with Joe Hyde, who works with the NHS Borders, who wanted to start groups in Eyemouth and surrounding areas for to encourage people to come in and get exercise and meet people. We have four classes running per week. Each class is completely different from another. We have yoga, we have Tai Chi, we have gentle exercise to music and exercise to music to those who are more if other want more challenging. Joe Hyatt ran these classes for about two years and then asked if the group would like to form a committee and run their own the classes themselves. Our relationship um, with uh, the Healthy Living Network is really, um, they're very supportive indeed. Joe Hyatt is, is, is a, a fund of all, sort of font of all knowledge and what we don't know, what we need to know she will find out for, for us. She supplies us with um, information, leaflets, etc., and advice. The participants uh, who had been going to the four exercise groups formed a committee and were enthusiastic enough to actually want the exercise groups to continue. So they obviously thought it was valuable enough for their health to, to carry on. And they've, they've really, I mean, their enthusiasm and commitment has kept that group going. Today in the hall we are actually having one of um, four committee meetings that we need to have to comply with our constitution. Uh, we have an AGM in June of every year uh, where it, obviously it's thrown open to everyone and um, they're not shy in coming forward and giving us their uh, moans and groans as well as thoughts for the future. I think one of the successes is they've managed to keep the costs low. They've, they've done it in such, they've done it in a really quite a, an innovative way that they're offering four exercise classes for 10 weeks for something like £20. They've kept it in the community centre, which is a really accessible venue, and they're very good at publicising it. And I suppose that's where we come in as well. We can help them to do that through my project. We can actually help them to reach the people that maybe they wouldn't be able to through posters and resources, etc. What I enjoy about being an Eyemouth Healthy Living Group is it gives me plenty of exercise. It helps me to keep fit. Um, and there's a good social aspect to it. Meeting new people, a sense of achievement when I do my classes, I know I'm getting fitter. Well, it's a social life as well as an active life, come to our classes. So it's, it's all part of a, of a whole, not just exercise, but as I say, um, part in knowledge and, and having fun. Part of our role is to capacity building in the community so they're actually helping us to achieve our aims because they're carrying out health improvement activity and um, therefore hopefully maintaining or improving the health um, of the local population or those certainly who come along to their group. And something that's available to everyone and it's affordable to everyone so yes it's very good. It's been helpful to have checks on board in a sense of We've been able to alert uh, groups such as Healthy Living Group and other community-led groups in the area to sources of funding, for example, or training they can tap into. Part of my role is to help develop volunteers in the project, to build the capacity of the project, and to actually see them grow in confidence and, and even move on to other things, meaningful employment or other volunteering. I think that's just fantastic. I really enjoy that. HIG was developed um, primarily as a, a reflective learning model to allow people who primarily were in disadvantaged circumstances to reflect on the social model of health, on community development and things that they could do themselves um, to address those inequalities either as individuals or within the communities that they, they lived in.
I think it's important to say about the, the healthy living centres themselves is, is the way that they're structured, um, that, the, that they're not just a top-down um, sort of process within communities, that the communities themselves actually sit on the boards of the actual projects and they decide on the direction of the project, they decide on, on the work that they're going to be taking forward, whether it's working with um, older people and, and, and uh, uh, intergenerational projects or whether it's working with um, young mothers or whether it's working with um, um, new mothers, then there's the, the, all those processes, they all happen at a board level and the members of those boards are made up of local community people and um, partners uh, and agency partners.